Here's a request that comes in from one of our Studio Insider members. Uh, you might check that out. You uh, click join and become a member of our Studio Insiders and get lots of perks. But aside from that, um, she asked, um, can you please do a video on high key painting? I love high key paintings and I'd love any tips for on what percentage of the painting should be darker in values. All right, we will give it some high key consideration. Well, the main thing that really uh, causes a painting to go into the category of high key is that it predominantly in a very light value. Predominantly, the lighter values are in this range right here. And we will have very little, if any, in some cases, darker values. This painting is typical of what people usually consider to be high key. Notice how little of really dark value we have. But if you squint, you'll notice most of the values, they're all very light, they're in this range, and the values are very close. So keeping those values very light and very close uh, and in, will always create a painting that falls in the high key. It looks like it's flooded with light, and I think that's why people love it. Uh, they're always, they always feel uplifting and sort of joyous uh, to look at. So, but there are other considerations too. If the majority of the painting is in that high key, such as we see by, uh, with this Monet painting, and yet the very small minority is in a darker value, as long as we have that feeling of light in the majority of the painting is still considered high key. Now there's no percentage. This person asked for a percentage of how much dark could go in. There's not really a percentage. Uh, if you wanted to say aim for around maybe 10-ish percent, 15 percent. You don't want the darks to begin to uh, become so related into the whole painting that we begin then to feel an interaction or a, um, no, I shouldn't say interaction, we don't want to feel that it's moving out of the high key range. We want that feeling of the blast of light in the whole painting. So let me move this value scale over or just move it down for a moment. I have some other examples here. Um, just to give you an idea, well, that's not the one I want to show you quite yet. Uh, here are some other examples, let's just pull this out of the way, of uh, high key paintings from history. And you can see here, you, again, this one would still be falling into that category of high key, but it probably has the largest percentage of dark in it that you would want and still have that feeling of flooded with light. This is closer. Uh, this is the French artist uh, Eugene Baudin that really did a lot of high key paintings, loved the high key paintings, and a lot of his will have only the dark, the darkest darks will only be about uh, a middle value range. Very few really strong darks. So that, those are considerations. Now, what I'd like to do is to give you a very quick and dirty uh, little demonstration of how you might go about if you are wanting to do a high key painting and you're wanting to maybe do it in plain air or you're re responding to a reference that you have but the reference is not a high key reference uh, this is one way that you can go about it so one thing consider now what we said we want the value we want the values of all the colors to be very light but only a very small percentage of the darker value. So that means in a high key painting you wouldn't have an area uh, this much covered with dark or in that dark range. So that means we're adjusting, we're flooding the, paint, the scene with a lot more light than our eyes are actually registering. So if we were to take something like this, I'm just going to do a very, very quick 
uh, very, very quick little demo here to kind of show you the idea. So if we're going to do that, uh, we would want first of all to lower, to raise very, very high the value of that sky. So right now the value of that sky is falling in that middle value range. But we would want to raise that. And so then that means we would begin, but we would add lots and lots of light to in the very beginning. And so I just do small areas in here because these are, after all, quick tips. And so they're not meant to be so extensive that you have to spend a full hour watching. So we could say that this, that even that could be lighter. Make this even lighter. Now, of course, in this particular example I'm doing, uh, the light looks darker because it's surrounded by white. And so, let's give it even lighter. Might just change the change the color of that just a little bit. Now here's the here's the real. Whoops! That went that went too dark when I did that. I had a little bit of red violet in there just to give us a little bit of variation in color. So you can vary the the hues that you put in a high key painting. You can have any kind of variation in hue as long as those values are kept close. Now in this area, we have the very high key. So what we want to do is we want the sky area and this area to be very close in value. And I would say keep them just within an, an interval of each other because you start getting more than one interval between the values. They begin to, it begins to take on a, 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 a value contrast that can cause it to feel or to lose that feeling of flooded in light. So you keep that keep the uh, contrasting of values um, at a minimum. We kind of lost a little bit of a brush hair there. I'll get that off. Well, anyway. Okay, so let's say I'm going to load the brush. We didn't really load the brush with lots of white there. I'll go into a little bit of yellow here and aim for that color. And then I'll go in a little bit of red violet here and get it. And then a little bit of yellow green. And see a little bit more of that yellow. Let's see if I can get that uh, very, very close. A little bit more red violet. And you see, as I do that, I've got this value scale already set up here, so that it doesn't take uh, it takes even. I have a little bit more control by getting these values at, a, at least a middle value before starting, and that helps then control the amount of those really dark hues, those that come out of the tube dark. Uh, helps control the amount you have to pick up. So let's see, I've got that. This needs a little bit more yellow in it, but I just want to keep them, add more white. I want to keep that key high. <laughs> keep playing with it. I have to be so, uh, I always have to be so exact when I'm doing something. But here's the idea. When you have to add more color to reach the color that you want or the hue that you want there, we always have to add white back in, or usually have to add white back in, because very few colors come out of the tube in that high key. And so uh, adjusting adjusting the light, we'll just gonna have to settle here pretty soon. Adjusting the light as you mix the color is important to the high key paint. I'm just gonna settle for this. this is not exactly the, the color I was aiming for, but I'm going to settle for that because uh, I don't want to extend this, just trying to get color right. All right, you see, I'm getting some variation here in the hue, which is fine. If you squint, you see how these two are very close in value. And yet we can discern sky from sand uh, because of the difference in colors, the difference in hue. And uh, um, there is a little bit of difference in saturation that also helps that, helps us discern those. So I'll just sort of, build that down in here and get those sort of blended down in here. Now that distance stuff, or this, what do we do with that? We can make or give that just a value difference. I'll show you how we can do that. So uh, let's go up here now and let's get just a value difference of this. I'll put a little bit of green in here and I need that to go towards towards orange, towards that, uh, 
low intensity orange. Let's see here. Let that get that just a little bit. Now the val remember I said we want to keep that value relatively close. That's probably too dark. So that means that I would need then to lighten that, but I want to have it a little bit there we go. There we go. So we could do this sort of thing and get see we just a little bit of value contrast, not much, just a degree of value contrast and by the color change and that degree of value contrast, but just a little bit more, we get just a little bit more value contrast going as we move down. See right in here like that. Just a little bit more. See, by having this middle middle value mixture, I'm able then to gradually pull more of that uh, that red violet into it and still be able to have the contrast I need. And so I can vary that. I can have the value variation. You see value variation is very close in there. Value contrast. So we can keep the value variation by simply having it a little bit darker and a little bit lighter. But not extremely dark and not extremely light. So you see there we go. And as I said let's just keep this rough and dirty. We'll throw a little bit of that up here. We see a little bit of that over there. So got that. And see this feels too dark really I think. But if I keep it in a small amount, let's try that. If I keep that in a smaller amount, in that area there, that works just fine. And I can even bring it out in here. A little bit darker, but not a lot darker. And I see some little posts and things in there that I can indicate just a little bit, whoops, just a little bit darker. And then we have the building and stuff in the distance there. Wait a minute. See, you see how dark that looks? And that really is not more than about about uh, this value on the value scale. Part of that is that it was a thicker paint. There we go. That's better. Now, so, so you see how very close in value we, we still have that. Now, as we go back, we can do a very small amount of a darker value. So I move this over in here. And let's just add some, uh, let some blue in, some yellow in there. Let's see. What do I, how, how do I want to do that? How far do I want to go? Move this up just a little bit over into the darker value here. And let's pull up a little bit of this and add a little green. Yeah, there are other there are other videos on color mixing. All right, so there we have a seat. Let's give it a little bit. There we go. You see, that is still that's a very light value. It's only about a, well, it's, only, it's about a value four to five middle value. But I could still use that back there and have that feeling of high key. So let's just sort of shape what might be the top of the building. And we could even have it a little bit darker. This is sort of shape that rough and dirty. Like I said, I'm going to keep it rough and dirty. And we could have a little bit of that, even pop a little bit of that in here if we want to. Sort of like that. Let's get that some blend. And then you can go into the blue and still keeping that value close. I can give that just a little bit more. Now see that's even darker. Do I want it, do I want it that dark? I could keep that a little bit darker. And we got that little bit of, little bit of a tower uh, up there. So I could even do that. Let's get that just a little bit more specific, trying to do all this with a, with a single brush. There you see, see, it's see, it's just very much in the same value range, but but not dark enough that it takes over the whole thing. Uh, let's pull this color out now and get that a little bit blended. Now. It really is rough and dirty, but that's exactly what I said I wanted. Now, if I want to, I can give a little bit of the very of, 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 of a dark value getting up in this range. Contrast. Just a little bit. Don't want much. And so what I'll do there is I'll just go right over in here in, in this value range, about a value 7 range. 
let's just get us some kind of a neutral there in that value 7 range and let's see what will happen when we do that. Is that going to be too dark? All right, here comes the old mall stick. Got to have this because I've got a tiny area there. And even though I said rough and dirty. Uh, let's try it right here. Look at that. See how dark that looks? That's because it's surrounded by so much light that it looks that dark. And so, uh, it's probably got, the brush is a little bit large for that, but doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. Let's put a little bit there. And we could even dot a few little dots in here. I could even probably could make it a little bit darker if I wanted to. And still, as long, long as that whole area feels like it's flooded with light, I'm good. Now I could do a little bit of this in here. A little bit of darker accent in there. So I'm sort of really carrying this one, this little demonstration, a little bit to the extreme. But to sort of show you that it is possible uh, to create a high key painting from any subject that you choose as long as you keep the values close just a little bit of value difference is going to feel like a contrast and a little bit of color difference now I see now I'm beginning to lose this because of that but see you can adjust those things I can just get that tiny bit tiny bit darker as long as I keep it in that same value range I mean as long as I don't uh, make it start feeling like it's not flooded in light I'm good so say I make a little bit of value contrast here like that that's just to keep it dirty. Let's don't try to make it look so much like anything. And you see, I can get do the same thing back there. So you can begin to add the darker values in once you have the whole thing set. So that gives you an idea of how you might go about creating a high key painting from any subject. Uh, I do want to add one thing to this, and that is we do also have the category of low key paintings. Now those are the paintings that are generally just the opposite, same principle, but on the dark side. Most of the most of the uh, painting itself will be on the dark side of the value scale. Nocturnes are a good example of that, but some of the uh, older paintings, some of the paintings you'll find where people are painting interiors before electric lights, where everything is tends to be very, very dark in closer value, and they may have like a little candle light there that's kind of then a much higher, much stronger light, but it's in a very small amount. So the idea is, if you're painting high key, you have the whole majority of the area flooded with light, the feeling of light, but a very small percentage of dark, if you use the dark at all, if you're going back and remembering the little examples I showed you at first, and it is possible just to develop an entire painting in that very, very high key in this area right in here, and have very little con value contrast. So it's a good exercise in uh, interpretation and in controlling value contrast. Be sure and view all of our quick tips. And while you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DianeMize.com where I have full length lessons downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.